Okay, so this trip of the bins, I went to the, the book bin first, and I found this book. I actually picked it up, and when I'm sitting here staring at this, wondering what that signature across the front title page is. Usually that's where it would be autographed, but it's not the same as the author's name, so that's why I'm not sure what that was. This is another book called Whistle Stop, and if you watched Fried Green Tomatoes the movie, you would have heard of the Whistle Stop Cafe. That's what this book made me think of. Well, I actually picked that one up too, and you'll see that in the haul video. And there was um, a lot of church-related books, um, and I described a little bit about that in the haul. But I did look at this book, and I thought about getting it, but it wasn't in the best of condition. So I picked up this one, and I didn't realize at the time I picked it up, but it's actually signed by the author and the illustrator. So that was an unexpected surprise. And those have sold just the autograph for the author. That copy of that children's book sells for $25. So I don't know if it would be different with both of them. I looked at this Bible, it's too bad it was in terrible shape. Um, but that would have been a good one had I been able to resell it, because if it was in better shape. So yeah, so today we're going to do the books first, which is unusual. But I got here late today, so. Now we go through the other bins. The household bins were um, on this particular path that I went through, um, they were pretty good, not overly full, and they'd been picked through a lot. So here I'm just looking for some different stuffed animals to see if there's any of those that might be worth something. And uh, there's always clothes mixed in here too, which I usually take and throw those into the other clothing bins if I find <laughs> to try to add a little semblance of order to what you find at the bins. I don't know if my little efforts help make the world a little better place or not, but it is what I do. I thought about this uh, Minnie Mouse figurine. I later on come across the similar Mickey Mouse figurine, but I have enough of them right now and they're not selling. So I'm kind of like, no, I'm not going to buy any more at this point until I sell some. Um, yeah, so I just keep digging a little bit here, a little bit there, look under the big fan. Um, craft, some of these uh, little craft packages there. With construction paper and markers. These things, I don't know what these were. I was trying to figure out what they were. There was, they fit inside of each other. And then I found this one, which makes them all like that. Now, I have no idea what they were. They kind of felt like um, that dirt that you buy that when you add water it expands. So I didn't know if they were for like planting or if they were, I don't know what they were for. So if anybody knows, let me know. But uh, I was confused. Here's some vintage camera stuff. And where's things. The big thing, this up, it wasn't Tupperware. It looked like Tupperware, but it wasn't Tupperware. So we leave that behind. You can see these bins are pretty empty. And then they replaced this row of bins later, and they were, that's how much stuff was in them too. Not a whole lot. They had several carts of electronics, which they usually don't put this many bins of electronics out. So they must have gotten a lot of electronics. I picked this box up. It's actually a bunch of rocks from Arkansas. And on the inside, it tells you what rocks, based on the color and stuff on that lid there. Um, so if you match the color, you can, they have a little paint swatch on the rock. And you take that color and you match it against that little uh, flap on the lid um, to see which ones they were. And I put it in my cart and I carried it around for a while, but then I realized that it didn't have all the rocks in it. And I was like, you know, I don't want to deal with it. I have sold... Uh, collectible rocks before, but um, yeah, I chose not to do it just because I knew it wasn't complete. It didn't have 
everything. Had it been complete, I probably would have considered it, but part of me is like, why do I want to pay for rocks? <laughs> uh, anyway, I thought this lamp was really interesting. It was a homemade one, and then later on I come across another one. This one's painted this bluish color. The other one was painted white, but both of them were missing figurines. So somebody just took plastic figures and glued them onto the lamp base and made this lamp out of them. And you just saw I picked up that small blue iron, and I did buy it. I took it to the checkout counter, but when I got back to my shop, it wasn't there. So I don't know what I did with it. I put it somewhere, I'm sure. So I'll have to still look to see where I may have put that little iron, because I don't know where it is. Anyway. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we're just continuing the hunt here. Not too much more to look at before it's all done. And we get into the hall. Looking for tissue paper. Did find some used tissue paper, but not new in packages, which I really like. This kind of confused me, too. It was a notepad, um, but on a hanger in the shape of a shirt. And I, yeah, kind of shook my head not knowing exactly what that all meant. So, anyway... Couple more things in the bin. Oh, back massager. Yum. <laughs> anyway. Hello, everyone. Welcome to my channel. Clay Ramage back again with another, that's right, Goodwill Bins haul today. Let's just say it was slim pickings today. And I was, usually I get there when they open at 8 o'clock today because I was doing a paper for a friend and dropping their daughter off at for school, I was an hour late. I didn't get there till nine o'clock today. And so the bins were really picked over by the time I got there, which is fine. I did find most of what I found my first round. And I did replace one row of the household bins while I was there. But the strange thing is they replaced them and the bins were, I mean, they were emptier than the ones they took away. I'm not sure what's going on there. So I really didn't, I don't know if I found anything the second round. I don't know. I don't think so. I think almost all of this was from the first round. So, um, found some good books and a bunch of smalls, very, uh, which is good. I don't need large things right now. <laughs> Any stuff I can easily deal with. So let's just get right into this um, haul and I'll show you what we got. So somebody donated their ladybug collection and I picked up one of the items which is this new and sealed package it's a yo-yo there's the string and it's divided between the two um now this does have a crack because the yo-yo is made out of wood so it expands and contracts with humidity so it did crack down the middle there but I just thought that was really fun you know something I can put down with the pink elephant for a couple dollars and some kid will probably really enjoy that I picked up Yahtzee score pads, um, this box, even though it's, I bought it for us, our personal use because we use these score pads and they're actually not that easy to find. So, and these are the old ones. These are 1973. But, um, so yeah, so that'll go home. All right, one of the things that I, when I ship stuff, I do a lot of double boxing, especially if it's fragile. Um, and so I found bunch of these small like four by four by four size boxes which are like ornament boxes or small coffee mug boxes so these are great because they're very lightweight so they don't add a lot to the shipping cost um, but they add that extra layer of protection so I picked up several of those and I even found a Mickey one now what's interesting even though this feels empty when I picked it up it has some tissue paper in there, but when I unwrap the tissue paper, this is the only one I saw. There's some more in here. There's these vintage Christmas ornaments. Look at this one. It's a little styrofoam piece of watermelon with a mouse. And you can tell the watermelon has lost a lot of its little fuzziness. Um, but it's still really cute, isn't it? And so I think and it's a Disney box, too, which is fun. So I think people just kind of pass these up. Oh! Ah, this one's got the... This is a made in Japan. 
This is another one. Isn't that darling? What a cutie. See, there's the little label. All new material, Japan. So they didn't do any recycling when they made this one. Oh, and there's just a little hand painted sled. So that was a fun one. And again, they're made out of styrofoam, so they weigh almost nothing. I got a beautiful little box. And these little guys, uh, we sell these at the Pink Elephant, made in Japan for about seven to ten dollars. So that was a good find. Oh, and then speaking of boxes, I still got more to go. I found this. It's I was hoping and I assume somebody took the reel out of the box. I don't know why people do that. They must not realize that if they take the box, they'll get more value. But anyway, so this is a Fluger, this is a fishing reel, Fluger Saturn. This is a vintage box. And I thought, well, somebody might be, who collects Fluger might be looking for a box for their particular reel. So I picked it up. Again, it's very light, probably paid a quarter for it. And so there's two options, probably more than two, but the two that I'm going with are, um, I can list this on eBay as is, as just an empty box for somebody to, um, purchase for their collection or my brother collects fishing equipment and Fluger is one of the brands that he collects I could give it to him um, or I could just use it to as a double boxing box to ship stuff in so I have multiple uses for that little box so we'll see um, and then I found this box too but didn't have a lid but I filled it with other things found a little olive wood Christmas ornament Mary and Jesus on a camel with a palm tree. That was pretty cool. And then I also found this one. This is a laser cut, so it's a modern piece. But I just thought it was really kind of cool, nativity scene. And it's got a string so you can hang it if you want or have it just sitting. So then I found a pair of glasses these are purple gives you the a purple view of the world but there was this piece of paper that went with them and it says specwear plant stress detection glasses featuring lenses made from nasa technology apply the power of knowledge um crack me up your stress detection glasses block the green color reflected from the chlorophyll found in your healthy vegetation, causing it to look black or gray. The human eye is very sensitive to light in this color range, so any off-green colors caused by disease, poor nutrition, or insects will stand out against this black background as a glowing red, coral, pink, or other hues. Problems can be quickly spotted from far away. Problems which might otherwise might not have been noticed until too late. Do not use these glasses as driving glasses. <gasps> So I was like, interesting. I did a quick search and couldn't find anything on them. So I'm going to do some more investigation on those. I thought those were pretty fun. Never heard of such a thing before. Um, then I found two light meters, a Tundra and a GE. Light meters are not that hot of an item, not that desirable, but I have another one. So I thought I would just lot them all together and make a a lot. This one actually sells for 10 to 15 and this one's under $10 for standalone meters. But I thought maybe a collector would like to buy them. Oh, I found this. I was digging through a, a vintage purse. It wasn't in very good condition, otherwise I would have grabbed it because it's beautiful leather. Um, but this is Apostleship of Prayer in League with the Sacred Heart. And then on the back side, um, Cease, the heart of Jesus is with me. Copyright 1936. So, thy kingdom come 100 days each time. I just thought that was pretty amazing. 1936, it's getting old. So anyway, so here's another box with some tissue paper in it. I picked up an ornament. This is a Thomas Kincaid, that's why I grabbed it. It's from... 1997 um just a beautiful little scene 
the box got smushed on one side, but the ornament is still brand new. It's not been taken out or used. So that was another reason why I bought it. And I found, so Christmas is kind of the theme here. Um, found this Christmas jumbo gift bag. I get paid hardly anything for it. Sometimes we need these. I thought, well, that's a good find. All right, let me go through. Oh, I found this, found a number of frames. So I'll go through those um, in a minute. I found, also found this Game Boy Color. Now I've had this exact same one before that I've sold. And that one I tested and worked. This one, I'll put a couple batteries. It does not have the battery cover on here, but I will test it, see if it turns on. I don't have any games to test that, but if it turns on, then I'll list it at $9.99 auction style and see what it goes for, which is what I did the last time, because it's this purplish color that people seem to like. And uh, so yeah, so if it works, great. If it doesn't work, I'm not out anything, um, you know, dollar or something. So, oh, I got a kick out of these. Found these buttons. Oops. Um, six feet, six feet, six feet. 25 years from now, people are going to go, what was that about? All about six feet, right? Oh, uh, but I just thought these were hilarious. I have no idea what I'm going to do with them, but I just had to grab them. Oh, they're made in the USA. Cool. But six feet buttons. Um, okay. Uh, I get confused sometimes. I'll mix in some of these frames because they're really kind of cool. Um, these are some really ornate decorative frames. These are not old. These are modern frames, but they were just so cool. They're all this smaller size. Um, they say they have genuine crystals. So that's a couple of those. Now, these two are made in Taiwan. So these are a little older, but I thought those were great. Then there's two more of these car with the general genuine crystals. Genuine. We have genuine crystals in those frames. And then the last ones, which were the first ones I found, are these two. They're little pedestals. But look at those. Aren't those great? And these were ten dollars each at Kohl's. That's what kind of made me decide go ahead and grab them, Clay. Because even if I lot two, like two together, these two together, and sell them for, let's say, fourteen or even ten dollars each. Not ten dollars each. Ten dollars for the lot for both of them. I'm still making money, um, and including shipping. So I, I just thought they were great frames. So that's what we're gonna do. All right. Some books. I found um, some church got rid of their entire library. I didn't think I'd pick this one up, but when I get here, I found that I did buy this one. It's a Lutheran hymnary. So it lists all of the orders of service and different information about the Lutheran church service, and that's from 1941. Okay. I just found one of these a couple of weeks ago, and it's already sold, the Norwegian Jokes. I sold it down at the Pink Elephant. This is the 16th printing. I can't remember if that's, I think that's what the other one was. And these are from the 1970s, if I remember right. 1979, yep. So that's a fun find. Found some great vintage children's book. This one is Mickey and the Second Wish. My Little Pets. Tiny Tots. Now this one's from 1972. It's a paperback. Um, but it seems older, but it's 1972 right there in the copyright date. But I think it's just because the pages are so yellow. Santa's Runaway Elf. And this one is the interesting one. It's a Rand McNally Jr. Elf book. But look, it was put in upside down. It's the second upside down book I found in the last few weeks. So it's probably why the pages are in such great shape because the kid didn't know how to read the poor book. 
hanging upside down. And this is from 1977. Um, and there is some ink on the front cover. Some kid colored on there. But I thought that was pretty funny that it was back backwards. The Night Before Christmas. Another Junior Elf book. This one is from 1950. So this is actually an earlier earlier copy. Um, okay, I got another frame. But what's interesting about this frame, it's a metal frame, and I looked at it from the side and you can see it's kind of kitty wampus. It's not exactly even. And what I believe this is, because when you look at the back, it's a wooden back with a wooden um, stand. And it's all hand done. And this is screw, there's screws that hold the back onto the frame. I believe this is a handmade frame. So this would be an artist person who is very creative in casting this. I believe it to be cast aluminum because it's not that heavy um, or cast pewter. It's hard to tell. I just thought it was really cool. So that's why I grabbed that one. This one I'll list on eBay. So I think that that'll be have some good value. I picked up this deck of cards too. They're magic taper cards. I have no idea what that means. So let's take, check the magic taper cards. Oh, they just look like regular cards. Anyone can find the selected card instantly. Okay, so this is the the trick deck. How you figure out what card? Somebody has, but these are made in Hong Kong. So this is a nice vintage, vintage piece. All right, a few more books. Found this one, this is Barabbas from the Bible. This is 1951 copyright paperback. But I love the illustration on the cover. I thought that was pretty cool. It's a novel. Found another Bible. This is the Amplified Bible, large print by Zondervan. I've been selling a lot of Bibles lately, been finding a lot of great Bibles that are very clean, not written in, you know, like in new condition. This one does have a wrinkly page, but it's not torn or anything, just wrinkled. And this one, yeah, 1987. So this is the one I just sold this, this one. And again, I pay probably two bucks for this. Oh, I just noticed it does have some edge wear. Um, right along the edges but um, so yeah so these are I've been selling these for like right around twenty dollars another book called whistle stop it's a novel winner of the major prize fiction the University of Michigan in 1940 1941 copyright convictions and controversies there you go. And this is 1935. It says, Here you will find a selection of varied orations, addresses, lectures, and magazine articles culled from the product of the last 15 years. The convictions here set down have remained the same during the period of the cover bubble. I don't know exactly what it is, but We'll find out when we look further. This is a children's book I picked up for our daughter for her classroom back home. And last thing I picked up was this record. <laughs> this is Agape Land, fully illustrated book included. The cover is pretty amazing. And the back continues. And then, yes, the record is in excellent condition. Then it also comes with this whole book. This book is intended to be used as a follow-along for the Agape Land Children's Album. So this is a children's album, 1964. It is a Christian group that... Um, special thanks to the Children of Faith Chapel, San Diego, California. So it's just a, a storybook about with looks like Bible stories and stuff like that. But I just thought the graphics on the cover were fantastic. I have no idea if it's worth anything. I'm sure it's a very limited 
production. Um, so we'll see. But that's what we found on our brief little trip to the bins today, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll catch you next time.